Hi all, welcome to my channel and to this tutorial which will be demonstrating a simple sports photography workflow using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Adobe offers a great package for photographers that will allow you to get access through the Creative Cloud to both Adobe Photoshop and Photoshop Lightroom for around about £8 a month. Photoshop is a great piece of software. It's incredibly powerful and allows you to delve deep into the image editing process. However, there will be times when you have a lot of images to edit in a short space of time, and this is when Lightroom comes into its own. In sports photography, you can be importing anything from 30 or 40 images, right up to over a thousand images at a time, depending on the event you're shooting, the details you're shooting it in, and all the requirements of your client. Therefore, you need software that will allow you to turn the post-processing around nice and quickly. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a very simple workflow using Lightroom which will get you off to a great start. And the first place we're going to start is with the import. Depending on how your computer is configured, it is likely that when you put the memory card into your card reader or into the computer itself, Lightroom will automatically start up and will open in the import screen. If that isn't the case, just open Lightroom up yourself, make sure that you're in the library section you can see from this menu in the top right hand corner we have library selected in white and from here click file and import photos or video the import screen will then load up and it's going to check for either photographs from your last location that you imported from from your card that it is reading from or allow you to select your own location from the panel on the left hand side now for the purposes of this demonstration, I've saved some images into the desktop of my computer. So if I open up desktop on the left hand side here, you can see this file Lightroom demo. And when I select that file, you'll see in this main panel in the middle, you're given a small preview of all of the images in the import. Now by default, they're all ticked. You can also untick these and select specific photos if you wish to, like so. Or if you're uploading during a live event from a memory card, which you've already perhaps uploaded from during the same event, but have not had a chance to delete all your photos, what it will automatically do is search for new photos. And this icon, or this word on the right hand side here, this new photos, that will be highlighted by default. And the only photos that are ticked is ones that have not previously been imported. During the import, it may be that you need to see more clearly, what is going on in each photograph before you import the files. To do this, we can increase the size of the thumbnails. In the bottom right hand corner, we have this option with a slider bar underneath the word thumbnails. And if we use the left mouse button and move this up the bar to the right, you'll see these thumbnails increase in size. This allows you to just get a better preview of what is in each file. Once you're happy with the photos that you've selected on the left hand side, it's time to turn our attention to this panel on the right. The top option, develop settings, and if we click in the drop down to the immediate right of this, we'll get a small sub menu which allows us to add different presets or filters or different effects to all of the photos that we're about to import. Now in sports photography, or certainly on this occasion, we're not going to use this option because we want to import the images as we saw them through our camera. The next field down though is a lot more important and this is called metadata. The metadata option within Lightroom allows us to add some really key information to our image files when we import them. This can be anything from usage and copyright information right through to event captions which are really important if you're hoping to work within a professional sports environment. Now often when you're working professionally within sports photography You'll probably use a software package such as Photo Mechanic to add really in-depth captions to your images. However, for the amateur or just keen photographer, Lightroom can do this job to some extent for you. Clicking in this drop-down next to the word metadata will allow us to assign some already created metadata to the image files that we're importing. Now in this case you can see I've got quite a long list of metadata options as I've used previously or, or presets as they're called but on this occasion I want to create some new metadata so at the bottom of the menu or second bottom select the word new this will launch this overlay box 
what that allows you to do is give your preset a name such as Lightroom demo preset and then you'll see this big long list of fields and you can add a lot of information about your images in here I'm not going to go through each of these now because this video will double in length but some that you might need to be aware of include the copyright information so if we scroll down to IPTC copyright this field here allows you to add a copyright um, status and also right usage into this field here it also allows you to put copyright URL into here so if you have a website which has your either contact information for rights usage or whatever in there you can pop the URL within the file the IPTC creator fields allow more information about yourself the photographer or the owner of the image if you're working on behalf of an agency perhaps and then we've got a lot more fields to do with um, different IPTC status and job identifiers etc etc now in a later video we will go through some more of the IPT IPTC information but the last field I'm going to look at here is the keywords one at the bottom and this just allows you to add different keywords to the image so in this case it might be football and the name of the tournament that these photos were taken at last year once happy click create and you'll see the metadata field has now changed to Lightroom demo preset as the one we've just created you can also add more keywords into this field here and this is going to apply them across all of the images unless you select them specifically otherwise so goal winning shot etc you get the idea when you're finally happy with all the information we've got it's finally time to hit that import button in the bottom right hand corner After a short delay, your images are going to load up in this main panel here. And we're still in library mode at this point, don't forget. On the right hand side, we're going to see some of the development settings. And if we scroll down, that metadata information that we entered previously. It also allows us to quickly select some keywords from the ones we've used in the past. Some of the ones it suggests itself. And you can also filter on keywords as well. If perhaps you're uploading an awful lot of photos or sorry, importing a lot of photos and want to sort them by keyword then you can do so on the right hand side if we continue to scroll down some more file information and photo information about the photograph itself and the camera settings when it was taken and again if you wanted to overwrite these you can do however our next job we're going to do is the actual development of the images and this comes a lot down to preference but certainly I'm just going to run through some of the basics I look for when quickly editing photos at pitch side. So using the toolbar on the top right hand corner, we're going to select develop. And you'll see the screen refreshes itself. And by default, it's going to load up with the first image we uploaded. Before we get into actually editing this image itself, it's just worth keeping in mind and being aware of the fact that you can make this canvas area here a lot bigger if you need to by removing some of these side panels. And to do that, you'll see these slightly grayed out arrows to the left hand side. If we click that, we can get rid of that menu. Same with the right hand side. And also at the bottom, we've got one already shrunk out, which is essentially just a list, um, a list of the thumbnails for all the different files that you're working on. However, ordinarily, I like to have all these on. And although it crowds, up, crowds the screen, sorry, it does kind of let me have quick access to all the different tools I need. So back to the editing process. I've spoke about it on my own blog and it's kind of um, very much down to individual taste. But with sports photography and in this specific example, football photography, there are a few things that I look for and I think a lot of other photographers look for. And that is, first of all, is the crop. Now, depending on obviously the camera you're using and the lens and the distance away that the athletes or the players are from you, we'll have a direct bearing on how much cropping you need to do and the old kind of phrase that photo photographers use sorry is to fill the frame and so even though this photo is taken quite a few um yards away from us it was shot on a 70 to 200 mil f 2.8 canon lens off of a mark d 
uh, sorry, a 1D Mark IV, there is still quite a bit of um, space around it. So if we look on the right hand side here, we've got this crop overlay tool. I toggled that on already, but if I take it off and just click it again, you'll see that this kind of cropping um, selection tool comes available around the side. All we're going to do is we're going to begin to crop this image in. Now, before we go any tighter, there's another rule that we need to be aware of, and that is that your horizons always need to be straight. Now, if you're shooting in a stadium or perhaps a smaller ground with those white rails around that you see a lot of amateur level over in the UK, you're going to have quite a lot of different um, points of reference to keep that horizon level. In this case, where we've got a field and there's like a, a curved um, woodland encroaching onto the, the area behind the pitch there, it's a little bit harder to, to ensure that you have um, a level horizon. So there's another way we can do this. And that is to see that any virtual, uh, sorry, vertical landmarks within the photos are kept vertical. And you'll just about see there's like a gantry or some scaffold very faint in the left hand side of the image here. So what we can do, hover the mouse outside of the highlighted area of the image and you'll see there's like a double ended um, curved arrow there. And if we hold the left mouse button and tilt, we can straighten that image up so that those two scaffold poles are pretty straight and this tells us that so long as that's on flat ground the rest of the image should be pretty much flat now what we can do is go ahead and crop the remainder of the image now i like to have a really nice crop on any images just because it really focuses the attention onto what's happening in the photograph because quite often in sports we are shooting action photographs and so we want all of the emphasis all of that attention to be on the action in the middle of the photo. When you're happy with the crop and the image is straight enough, click the crop tool again, and this will kind of crop your image for you, like so. Now this photo was taken on an incredibly sunny day last summer, which we don't have many of, but there we go. Um, this one was, and you'll see that the light is very strong, the sunlight that is, is very strong from the left hand side of the image, just casting these shadows up here. However, the front of the players themselves, I'd say in terms of exposure, are pretty much spot on. We can use our histogram here if we want to really um, get down and, and see that in more detail. But if there were some amends you wanted to do, then Lightroom has these fantastic um, quick sliders that you can just alter some of the settings with. So we've got an exposure one here. We can drag it really far up if we want or really far down. Again, I was pretty happy with how it was. Another quick tip here is if you slide it too far and you're maybe working on a touchpad or something um, and you need to kind of get it back to where it was originally, double click the word exposure and it'll just change that, that dial, if you like, of, of that slider back to the central position. You can play with the contrast a little if we want as well. Highlights and shadows, if you wanted to bring those really uh, kind of blown out pitch behind there, if we wanted to bring that down, we can kind of drag the highlights right down brings it in ever so slightly um any areas that are really dark so shadows or perhaps the you know there's not much going on shadow wise on here um maybe the black areas of this guy's kit if we wanted to lighten them up we could just drag the shadows up lighter a bit um however i don't think there's too much requirement on this occasion for that another really interesting tool i like to use occasionally is clarity not so much on sports photos but um certainly on others it's a nice tool to experiment with and clarity can just really um, add almost like a, a pastel finish, if you like, if you crank it really high up to the photos. Once you're happy with everything, there we go, I'm really happy with that photo, you're ready to save it. Now, one of the first things I was confused of when I started using Lightroom a couple of years ago is the inability to have a file and save as. Now instead, Lightroom gives you the option to export the photo, which is essentially exporting the edit that you've done and saving that to a new location on your computer. And the benefit of doing this rather than saving or saving over the, the original photo that is, is you always keep that original version of the photo in your computer ready to use. So if we were to go and look at the root file of where this photo was uploaded to the computer, it will be unchanged despite everything we've done in Photoshop. And that means you've always got um, the end result of your work and also that unspoiled original should you ever need to go back um, 
and amend that photo again and we can go back into the develop tool at any point open this import up and kind of take off any of these amends that we've done so instead we're going to go file and there's this export option right here now when you click export you're going to get this dialog box open over the top and this top export location offers you the chance to kind of choose where you're going to save this file to so i'm just going to go back to my desktop um, and save it as a subfolder within the lightroom demo file there's loads of other settings here as well as it can kind of affect um, the sequential numbering of file names um, the file settings so whether you want to really bump that quality or file size up or, or limit it all the same the resolution whether you want to remove metadata when you export them you can add watermarks none of that i need to do regularly when when kind of working at football so what i do i usually before the game i'll have my export location already set up as it is here and when i export the photo um, it'll export it to that location but also when i've finished editing the next photograph so if we load this one up for example and you can see that's a really um, poor photograph in many ways but if we were to um, to export this now rather than having to go into file and export we can just do export with previous and that will export the photo to the same file as the one we've last sent but will just stop us having to go through the entire process again of going into the dialog box and, and choosing location so it's just a quick way to the same end result one of the things I really love about the export function in Lightroom is that if you're working for a single client, say for example a football club, um, and you want to very quickly and cleanly deliver the photo um, or photos to them, edited and completed, you can do that from using export very easily. And the way I do that when I'm working for a club is file and export. And if you go to choose, I always have Dropbox ready to go on the computer. So ahead of a game, I will speak to the club in question, set up a shared Dropbox file, give them the details of that ahead of time so they know they can access it and that I, you know, I'm confident they'll be able to access it when I'm pitch side and can't be there to hold the hand. Um, and then before the game, they should come in, select the file you want to um, export all your images into. And then when you're there at pitch side and you're shooting away, it might be that the team you're covering scores a goal. Well, if you follow this Lightroom workflow within a few minutes, if you've got your metadata preset set up before the game as well, which is kind of best practice to do so, you can have the image um, ingested into Lightroom, edited and exported off into Dropbox as a finished product within minutes of the goal going in. And that is really what is going to make you um, kind of stand out or at least be effective as a, a sports photographer is delivering not only a quality product, but also delivering it in a really timely fashion. So that's really it for today's tutorial. It's the first one I've done, so I hope you find it useful. As I say, we will have some more to come in due course, so we're going to take a look at Photo Mechanic and a few other bits and bobs. I'm also going to review a couple of products that I've been um, fortunate enough to get hold of and that have aided me in my work as a sports photographer. Um, so let me know in the comments if you've got any feedback. Obviously, give us a, a like and a subscribe if you if you like the content, you'd like to look at some more in the future. And also, you can check me out on my website and all my, the work, my portfolio. That's at talru.com, which gives you an overview of who I am, what I do, and a blog um, that will be updated fairly regularly. And also, you can catch me on social media as well on the links just below. Thanks for watching.